Hi, welcome back. Uh, this is where we left the scene at the at the end of the last movie clip. So that was the end of part three. Um, so we rendered that, and this is the the rendered image shown in Photoshop. Okay, and yeah, this is well, you know it's pretty good, but it's it's static. Uh, we don't really have any objects in here to set the scale. Uh, no people, vegetation, vehicles, etc. So you could add that stuff in Photoshop. Now it's fairly laborious and if you choose a different viewpoint then you've got to go and change the position of all the objects again to match up. So just show you how you do that in Photoshop anyway. So what we do first is kind of lift the lift the image off the uh, the page. So we've rendered it with the ART render in 3D Studio and what that does in your channels area it will create an alpha channel okay so if I click on alpha 1 you can see you know, there's, a, there's an actual gap between the parts of the building but here we've got glass we're looking through glass and then over the wall that runs around the back so you can see the transparency is maintained in the in the the alpha channel so that's going through two layers of glass there that's why it's medium gray okay so you click on alpha one load the channel as your selection click RGB go back to layers now it's probably wise to copy this instead of cutting it so control C control V just in case you make a mess up you can go back to the background okay now I've got a picture of a tree here and I've got its its accompanying alpha information so commercial materials are often supplied like this they might be in the same file but here they're in separate files so what you do first when they're separated like this in the alpha channel control A control C so you're copying it to the clipboard go to the photograph of the tree, go to the channels area, add a new channel, okay, then control V. Okay, then you can do it the same way, we load the channel as the information as the selection, back to RGB, we've now got control of the tree, the, the bits we do want, control C go to the render now control V okay check your layers the tree if we were putting it in the background would want to be in between the layer 1 and the background so we move the tree I'll pull the layer 1 forward to make it easier okay and you can see there whoops moved the wrong one go back to where you were okay get to layer 2 and we've got a massive tree here. Now to scale that might be about right. Okay. It's probably a bit too big there. So we would scale that down, edit, transform, scale, and you hold shift and drag a corner, and we can see the tree getting smaller. Now you're looking for the for the, the ground line. Okay, so the trunk the base of the tree wants to be effectively kind of halfway up the image so it wants to be on the ground line okay so keep keep the tree on the ground line okay let's move it over here maybe you can see it go behind the glass in that position okay we've got a base here on the model that's causing problems we'd have to try and cut that through to, to see the tree Okay, that's okay for stuff in the background, but when it's in the foreground or when it's right in the middle of the model, it's much trickier. You know, a person would cast shadows, but there'd also be a reflection. There'd be a reflection in the water. It's, it's a lot more work. So adding props to 3D Studio makes more sense. It might not look as realistic, but if you're intending to use multiple viewpoints, it certainly is quicker. So I'll close 3D Photoshop there. Not bother saving any changes. 
left the studio behind. Okay, so let's bring in a few props here. Now remember you need to tell 3D Studio where to find the images. So if the bits you're going to add are in different folders, then remember to customize, configure user paths, external files, add, and tell it where the other materials are. And that's what I've done here. I've added another folder that's got more images in. Okay, so we'll bring in the, the, the examples that we've, we've got prepared in our maps folder. And that's a couple of types of tree. One is a, is a mapped tree where it's basically paper thin and the other is a full kind of modelled tree which will add a lot more to the, to the size of our model but it will be more realistic and movable. Okay, so to bring something into 3D Studio that's already a 3D Studio file you go to the number 3, import, merge. Okay, I'm taking it from this ART folder. Uh, so we've got a sculpture first, we've got the sculpture of the, of the female that goes in the reflection pool. Click open, pick the name of the object inside the file, otherwise you'll bring in nothing. Okay. Now that model knew where it was going. Okay, you can see the sculpture has arrived. If I turn the this view round, I can see the sculpture in the back there. Okay, if I want to get a material from an object that I brought in, that's quite easy. Okay, so if I want to change the material on the sculpture, go to materials editor, just let it settle down. Seconds. Okay, well let's let's replace this material with a material from the scene. So you get material. We look to the scene tab, and there's the material here. Pool sculpture. Double click, and that's the material. I can use it elsewhere if I want to. Okay, so what if we bring the items in and they aren't in the right place? Okay, so we number three, import, merge, and let's bring in the tree map. So this is a very simple piece of paper effectively with a picture of a tree. Okay, tree opacity mapped 01 and OK. And that has arrived here. I can see the, the object just there. If I zoom out here. Zoom out here, there's my tree. And you notice it's transparent. Okay, the, the picture of the tree is solid, but the area around the tree is transparent, and that's called opacity mapping. Let's have a look at the material so you can see how that's done. Let's get another material from the scene. Okay, and look for it in the list. Okay. Because I've got the object selected, it's easy to pick find its material. The red tag here indicates that that material is visible in the, on the model. It's nothing. It's not a warning, a danger, or anything. Okay, so we'll double click that. Okay, I'll change this to a cube instead, so you can see what's happening here. Okay, and what we're looking for is a cutout map, sometimes called the opacity map. Okay, so that's using the alpha information along with the base color information. And when the two get combined, we get this effect of see-through in the areas we're not interested in. Okay, now we wouldn't sit the tree in that position, we want to move it somewhere else in the model. So if I move it round the back here, remember that's where my camera is, looking this way, the tree has to face the camera. Okay, so move it over. Watch for the height of the object, make sure it's sitting on the ground. And we can rotate that so that it's perpendicular 
to the camera's viewing direction. So if I rotate it, use the yellow or the grey, click and drag downwards. So it's up or down to rotate. And you can see that the, the, the tree is now starting to face the camera properly. Okay, that should work okay. There's a bit of a clash there with the roof, so I might need to move my tree back a little bit. Okay, if I wanted another tree, if you hold shift and click and drag, it will create a duplicate. Okay, instancing is okay, but copying with this simple material, this, this simple object is probably better. It automatically increases the number for you. Okay, rotate to make this face the camera as well. Okay, to make a bit of variation, you might rotate it much more. Spin it the other way around so it looks like two different trees. Okay. Now the problem with these is that they don't when the 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 angle of the light is coming in this direction, so the shadow from this is going to be very poor. It's going to be kind of dragged out. Okay, so a better way of doing this is to use proper modeled objects. So if we import another one, so I'll give this a bit of space, I'm going to move this away a bit further, let's put it down here so that we make use of that gap, you can see through it. So this time it's import merge tree modeled, okay, there's 140 megabytes in this one tree. Our model at the moment is not even one megabyte, so you can see that these trees do add a lot of weight to the model. Okay, the tree has arrived and I can move that into position. Okay, if I put it here then it's going to cast shadows. The light will pick up the top of the tree and start casting shadows in this area. Okay, I might want to introduce a bit of foreground here. Perhaps I want a tree just entering into my view. Okay, It doesn't have to be accurately positioned, it's all for effect. Okay, So this time we do instance it because of the size of the object. If we don't instance we've added 280 megabytes to the model. So this one I'm going to raise it up so I just see the bottom of the leaves coming into my view. could also do here is add in a lot of other props that I've got ready to go. So we'll import, merge, and I'm just going to go to a different folder for these. Okay, so I've converted the file to an ART file. Okay, I'll just show you where the converter is once these have arrived. So we open, there's a lot of objects in there, We've got people, some lumps of building to go in the background, all sorts of things. So I'll take all those objects and OK. OK, there may be a few clashes with the trees we've already put in, but that's OK. It's saying that there's a material already in the scene that's the same name as one coming in. Put a tick in, apply to all duplicates, and, well, actually, for this one, I would use the merged material. Oh, no, use the scene material. That would be some more sensible. Use the scene material. Okay, so it's much busier now. We've got all sorts of people stood around, sitting, you know, conversing, and what have you. Okay, let's just clear. Let's just move this tree a bit further away. Maybe another copy of it over here. down here. I've got a tree here that's blocking a lot of my view, so I'm just going to move that one out of the way. I'm just going to delete it. So that's really looking busy now. All sorts of people in action. Okay, but the good thing is I can move my camera and the shadows will all be updated, any reflections also. So let's, let's move this person over here so they cast a, refle cast a reflection down 
onto the ground. Or maybe a bit over here, so I see them reflecting in the pool. I'm going to move these two people a bit further across. Okay, so we'll hit render now and see what we get with that. And I'll pick up the render at the end and let you see the, the finished article. So I want to change the name of the render. So I'm going to rename it to the final cam1. TIFF file again. Okay. Just check that it's going to save the the alpha information. Sometimes it uh, doesn't, so I just clicked here, check setup. Yeah, it's going to store the alpha information. Okay, it's just doing a backup now. You see the spinning disk? We've got a big file now, so it's doing a backup. It might be wise to save the file properly at this stage anyway. So I'm going to save this as file end part 4. So save as, save as, and this will be end part 4. Okay, put it in my folder. You'll be able to see the size of this once it's finished. It'll be much, much bigger. Saving is taking a long time. Okay, so render production. And once it starts, I will pause the video and bring it back on in about five minutes' time. So I've, it's still only got um, a five minute maximum rendering time. It's initializing the objects here. It's got a lot of objects to think about now, different people and the different tree types. So taking a bit longer to get started with the rendering. So you have to allow for that in the time as well. Okay, so you can see the long shadow cast by the person, and the trees and everything now starting to reflect in the ground. Shadows of people here, somebody about to go up the steps, a statue in the distance inside. We've got reflections of the trees now appearing on the glass as well. Reflections of the people here. Looks far more interesting. Okay, a bit unfortunate that these two people have got the same colour top. Same here, same colour top. These are the things you need to watch out for. You make your images look a bit, kind of, look fake. Okay, so we'll pause the video just there and come back in a few minutes. Okay, so the, the rendering is finished there. We only, bear in mind, we only gave it five minutes. And because it's a larger scene with more objects in there, you should really allow it to render for longer. Okay, because each, each iteration takes longer to do. Each pass on the renderer takes longer. Okay, but it looks pretty convincing, you know, especially things like these reflections. You know, very realistic. Okay, now if you're wanting to, to kind of archive that or take it somewhere else, then if you use the uh, one of the helpers in the software, so go to the spanner icon here, we want to go to more, resource collector, okay, I'm just going to create a folder on the desktop just so you can see what happens. Okay, so we'll go to the desktop, create an empty folder. Okay, and we'll just tell it to drop all the pictures that are in the scene into that folder. Okay, sorry, clicked off that. So resource collector. And I've gone and messed it up there, I think. That's clever. Let's try that again. I'll double click it this time. That's better. I'll browse, so go to the desktop, should have a new folder there somewhere. Looking for a new folder, there it is. Use path, and 
begin. So what it's done is dropped all the pictures used in this file into here, which is really handy if you're wanting to give the file to somebody or archive it or uh, just keep track of everything. Okay, so I hope that's been useful and given you a, a start in uh, using 3D Studio. Amazingly clever piece of software, uh, very, very powerful and creative. Okay, thanks for uh, taking time to watch.